Welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. In some prior videos, I discussed the phenomenon of Brazilian loggers and truck drivers taking over US military satellites to use as sort of a space-based CB radio system. As some backstory, back in the 1970s, the US launched a bunch of geostationary communication satellites known as Fleet Satcom. Now, in the 1970s, the US military, in their infinite wisdom, said, if we use an obscure frequency that nobody else has available, there are no other radios available for this frequency, we don't need to have any security on this system, we don't need to have any access control, and only our special military radios transmitting up in the 300 megahertz range will be able to access the satellite. They bounce back down in the 250, 260 megahertz range, Great, everything was fine until a few years later, somebody realized you could just take a ham radio, a frequency doubler, and suddenly you're in the 300 megahertz range. So a lot of foreign countries jumped on this, especially countries that have no law enforcement treaties with the US. So people started grabbing cheap ham radios, uplinking to these Navy satellites, and boom, they had their own space-based CB radio. If you tried this in the US, you would definitely get a visit from the men in black. Now I've listened to Portuguese transmissions on the fleet SATCOM satellites that I can see from here in North America, from the Western Hemisphere, but these satellites are all around the globe, and there are some over in the Eastern Hemisphere, over Europe, Russia, Asia, and interestingly enough, these are used by not just Brazilian loggers, but also Russian military users. This was kind of an interesting overlap in the 1970s and 80s. It turned out that a Russian telephone system was on that same frequency range, that 250, 300 megahertz band. So the US satellites were picking up Russian phone calls, maybe by accident, maybe that was a feature, maybe the US military just happened to want to listen to Russian phone calls. But the Russians figured out pretty quickly that they could use this system for their own means. And nowadays it turns out this is a big deal in parts of the world where conflict is going on, especially after Russia invaded Ukraine. When I tune into these satellites from here in the US, it's all pretty mild deforestation. It'll kill us all eventually when the Amazon rainforest finally burns down, but it's not an active international conflict. When I tuned into the satellites that see parts of Russia, Europe, and Asia, you get a lot more interesting stuff. You get Russian military forces using these insecure US military satellites to complain about the war, say some interesting things about the populations they're trying to take over. It's a little more serious and a little less amusing than just listening to some truck drivers. <laughs> As I mentioned, I can only see the fleet SATCOM satellites that are on this side of the world, but there exists a thing called a web SDR, where you can hook up your software-defined radio to the internet, share what you're seeing on the radio spectrum in your part of the world to anybody who logs into that website. And I noticed this a few years ago when I started looking at web SDRs. I noticed that SDRs in South Korea and Japan were seeing some interesting traffic on US fleet SATCOM systems. It seemed like in Siberia, in parts of Eastern Russia, these satellites were basically pirate radio stations. The US military wasn't really using them and didn't seem to care enough to jam the unused frequencies. So Russian radio pirates would just take them over, start broadcasting Russian techno and yeah, it was a little bit interesting. And then after the Ukraine war started, well, it turned out Russia has kind of a crummy radio system themselves. They have a couple C-band communication satellites in weird orbits that don't seem to actually work very well. So Russian forces on the ground didn't have consistent and reliable ways to communicate. If you're a radio amateur in Europe, I'm sure you know all about HF and shortwave stuff. There are probably all kinds of interesting things you guys can listen to that I don't get over on this side of the world. And the Eastern Hemisphere SATCOM is one of those things. So when I tuned into some web SDRs in occupied Crimea, in parts of Eastern Europe, I get a whole new set of radio transmissions coming down from the Navy SATCOM satellites, mostly in Russian. And I ran these by a friend who speaks Russian, and he said, yeah, most of these sound like soldiers complaining about their superiors, bad-mouthing the locals, committing other random war crimes, that sort of thing. There are even transponder frequencies that just seem to be pure Russian propaganda or patriotic Russian music. Now, I'm not going to play 
entire clips of these because my Russian friend said there's a lot of swearing, there's a lot of questionable stuff on there. So I don't speak Russian, I don't know what these guys are saying, but I'm not going to risk uh, putting out something offensive or something that's going to get me demonetized. There does seem to be a little bit of back and forth. I did hear what seems to be attempts at jamming some of these frequencies. I would hear people talking and then there would be music playing over the top of them. So. trying to drown out uh, the Russian soldiers with music or just with interference. So it's definitely not a secure communications channel. It's not 100% reliable, but apparently it's more secure and reliable than what the Russian government can offer to its own soldiers. I mentioned that these are all 1970s technology and 1970s satellites, but it turns out some of these are pretty new satellites. In fact, one of the more popular US satellites that has been taken over by radio pirates is known as UFO-11. That's UHF follow-on system, not unidentified flying object. UFO-11 was launched in 2003, so this is not some obscure archaeological piece from the 1970s. This is a fairly recent satellite. Why does it not have any access control? Why does it not have any security on these open repeaters? Well, it's probably a legacy system because the U.S. military is very slow to upgrade technology. They want to be able to use some of these satellites without jumping through a bunch of hoops in an emergency. And that's one possible explanation. Another explanation is Maybe the U.S. military still wants to listen in on Russia. Maybe they kind of like that the Russians are able to use these frequencies and use them more effectively than Russia's own satellite communications because it gives us basically a free look into what the Russians are doing. It gives us basically free intelligence information. I don't know for sure, but there definitely seem to be a few of these satellites fairly recently launched. They're still using wide open repeaters where any signal coming up on one frequency will just get bounced right back down on another frequency without any access control, any security at all. And the U.S. military does still use some of these satellites and some of these transponders. You'll see data transmissions, you will see some encrypted stuff coming from authorized users, but you will also see plenty of open, unencrypted communications, just plain old FM two-way radio transmissions. Now, I don't do a lot of radio stuff on the other side of the world. I stick mostly to North America, the Western Hemisphere, satellites that I can see from here, signals that I can pick up easily with cheap equipment from here. I haven't really gotten into long-range HF, shortwave, things like that, but it is really interesting to listen to some of these things on these web SDRs. Anyway, this is probably just a short video. I just thought this was kind of interesting. It's kind of uh, geopolitically relevant in today's modern world and just a really interesting radio phenomenon that's going on that I've taken pretty lightly in the past. I used to be kind of jokey about it. I said, oh yeah, it's just Brazilian truck drivers and radio pirates, but there actually seems to be some military use of these satellites and they're basically being used and abused by anyone with a cheap radio. Now again, I am not advocating that anybody use these themselves. As I said, if you do it in a first world country, if you do it somewhere that respects the US, then you'll probably get in trouble. But you can certainly listen to them with your own equipment or with one of these web SDRs if you're curious about what's going on there. I hope this has been an interesting video for everyone. Like I said, it's probably just going to be a short one. It was just something I kind of came across recently and thought was interesting enough to share. And again, if you're interested in learning more about it, I'll throw some links down in the description and you can check it out for yourself. Thanks again to everyone for watching and we'll see you next time.